Hi there. It's been a while since I showed another tutorial on how on Affinity Designer. So uh, this time I thought I'm going to try to come up with something equivalent to the Live Paint Bucket Tool in Illustrator. Now, now uh, if you don't know what the Live Paint Bucket is, it's um, kind of like the Bucket Tool in Kakani in animation software. So you can draw your strokes um, freestyle. And, I don't know what that was. And then once you make your fills, you can still uh, move the strokes and the fill will update so you don't have that gap space. So I'm tr I tried to find an alternative to the Live Paint Bucket Tool, but what I'm going to show you, it doesn't use the rules of vector design and Affinity Photo will be needed also, so you need a Affinity Designer and Affinity Photo. My goal is to find a way to do more freestyle drawing in Affinity Designer because uh, you, you probably know I'm really into cartoons, but something that uh, I prefer not to do is close up all the paths. I mean, if you're doing a simple drawing, then I'd say, yeah, you should probably close up the paths. But in more complex examples, it does take time to figure out, okay, how am I going to close this up? So uh, this is just something I thought of for more freestyle drawing. So we're going to be uh, free drawing uh, the strokes, and we're going to do something different for the fills. So let me uh, show you what I came up with. Uh, I don't know if you'll like it if, because there are a lot of steps involved. Oh, but I want to show you that how this technique may work and if you do edit your stroke there's a way you can fix it without having to update the fill it itself. So let's take a look. Okay so here is a drawing I made and you'll see it's drawn in all open paths. Now why did I do that? Because let's say I want to have a line looks look like uh, this. If I join these two paths together then the difference of weight adds to the center now. So I want to have uh, different profiles look a little different. So now I want to color this in and something a lot of people do is uh, when they draw stroke, when they draw a line art with different stroke variations, they use the pen tool and they create a color in the layer behind. So I'm going to do something a little different. So I'm going to open this, open this layer. So this is the line art layer. I'm going to duplicate this. So I'm going to just drag this down here going to hide this layer here. I'm going to just tap this uh, name and I'm going to call it reference. And now I'm going to bring the stroke weight down. So the upper layer, the stroke of the upper layer is going to stay thick and the reference layer is going to stay very thin. So now I'm going to create several other layers. Okay, now I'm going to edit in photo, so right click, edit in photo. Now with the reference layer selected, I'm going to take the magic wand tool and, uh, not the magic wand tool, but the flood selection tool. Oh wait a minute, I didn't rasterize this yet. Yeah, that's a little trick, so I'm going to right click and click rasterize. Okay, it's this is the one I'm rasterizing. So now with that layer selected, I'm going to create a selection. And this is why I made the strokes very thin. So um, it, it goes more inside the thick stroke. Now I'll select one of these layers and I'll create a mask. Now here's the neat trick. Within that mask, 
I'm going to just create a shape and give it a color. So now we have a vector object within that selection. So we can still uh, do gradients, uh, clipping, or whatever we want. And that's what all of these layers are going to be for. All these layers are going to be for the different color here. So I can move this object and it will still stay within um, these regions. But, you know, um, let's say that I want to, okay, make an adjustment here. So say I want this line to come down like that. So let's say I want to have his shirt look like this instead. Now we have this gap space, but uh, we already uh, used a gradient on the object, and so we want to keep it like that. So what we're going to do instead, we're not going to remove the object, but what we are going to do is just remove the mask. So just click the mask thumbnail, delete it, keep the object like that as it is right now. And I'm going to just remove this reference layer and we're going to make a new one. So right click line art, duplicate it, bring the stroke way down. And you can't see it right now because it's hiding behind this other one. And I'm going to just hide this layer for now. Okay. So, rasterize. Reference. Make the selection. And actually, it looks like I made a little too much of the selection, so... I'm just maybe subtract this. Okay. Hold on. Okay, now I'll make the selection. Okay, so uh, I'm going to select that object again, create a mask. So there we go. Now I don't know what you guys think of this technique, it's just something I thought of, something as close to the live paint bucket tool as I could think of. So uh, let me know what you think.